Welcome everybody. Uh, welcome in the uh, summer uh, season of uh, our Prague semi seminar. Uh, and uh, today we are glad uh, to have uh, as a first uh, kick starter uh, Igor Kafkine, who came to us uh, from the uh, uh, Mathematical Institute uh, of uh, uh, Czech Academy of Sciences uh, in Prague. So not uh, uh, far from our uh, building, uh, but still. And uh, we are also tempted to uh, looking forward to this uh, talk because he announced his talk uh, 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 very long time ago, uh, about uh, months ago. And uh, due to uh, Igor's illness, uh, it uh, uh, wasn't possible to, to deliver his talk uh, in the winter school, so he decided to not cancel this and uh, uh, give us this talk uh, on on, uh, on our seminar. Yeah. yeah. So so Igor, uh, yeah. Stage is yours, and uh, we're looking forward. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Nadine, very much for the introduction. And so yeah, I'm I'm quite happy to have a second chance to present. Uh, uh, my talk uh, for basically the same audience that I wanted to present it to uh, uh, anyway. Uh, okay, so um, I will try to explain uh, the what the, the things that appear in in the title, uh, and I guess I have to start with. So can you see here? Is there any yes. limit to where I can? I right. always try to not limit you at all. All right. Okay. So uh, just wanted to, to start with uh, kind of a, a, a quick uh, heuristic discussion about LNT algebras. Um, <clears throat> okay, so the main uh, point uh, uh, that I want to, people to recall is that, uh, so these are in some sense more topical uh, generalizations. Of uh, the algebras, so you can imagine that it has to do with vector spaces, brackets, uh, Jacobi relations, and, and so on. But uh, they're also general enough that they appear in other contexts that could be generalizations of other things. Right. Uh, right, so uh, there are many different um, <coughs> different but equivalent. Presentations of the axioms of the non algebra. So there are some that have to do with uh, so the classical one, so vec uh, vector spaces or graded vector spaces plus brackets plus the uh, Then there's uh, uh, there are other representations that have to do with uh, uh, free or possibly co or possibly not co uh, DG uh, or uh, let's just say DG co algebras or DG co algebras, <clears throat> DG algebras or DG co algebras. Um, there are also other presentations in terms of so called uh, derived brackets. So uh, and and so on and so forth. Uh, in uh, in in terms of um, uh, each each one of them, there uh, may be some scary elements. Uh, and I know for sure that I found a lot of or uh, every single one of these presentations uh, quite scary at first meeting. And some of them I still do. So for example, this one I really still don't understand. So I will not say anything about this. Um, so the presentation in terms of um, uh, DG algebras or DG co-algebras, uh, it uh, is in a sense uh, simple from the algebraic point of view because it relies on axioms that a lot of people already know, but it is in a sense very inflated. So it requires these underlying objects like a free algebra 
to be uh, uh, as the arena on which you're you're working. Um, the presentation, in terms of just you know a vector space with brackets on it, is uh, much more minimal. Not minimal in the technical sense, but kind of minimalistic, uh, because all the complexity is not encoded in the algebra structure and so on, uh, but in just the brackets themselves. Uh, but when you need the um, uh, the definition in terms of these brackets and high correlations, you find words that uh, sound like shuffle uh, or unshuffle uh, products, uh, lots of sign rules, and, and so on. So this is very confusing. So uh, what my goal, part of my goal is, is to basically take this uh, this presentation of elementary algebra and to simplify it as much as well in some notational way. Once you simplify the notation, then at least for me, uh, that notation became useful as a tool to uh, study some results in uh, theory of the algebra, in particular this uh, this construction of uh, homotopic transform. All right. <clears throat> so let me. Um, Uh, so let me quickly give this definition uh, of uh, elementary algebras, and uh, I'll do it a non-completely precise version first, uh, and then I'll make it precise a bit later after introducing some notation. Right, so definition is uh, is a, 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 a graded vector space. Let's say V. All right, so by graded, I mean that you know it's a direct sum of uh, some uh, components, each one of degree n, and I'm grading by by integers. Of course. So uh, let's say that we're only dealing with a degree-wise finite dimensional case. It simplifies a lot of things. For example, even if this is infinite dimensional, that's a nice do if you do like degree-wise. Uh, so then the UI is still finite dimension. Um, and uh, it sometimes is helpful also to assume that uh, these, uh, in some you know, degrees, uh, these vector spaces are vanishing, so for example, from some large degree to infinity, or from some very negative degree to minus infinity. So some depends on what you want to do. Uh, all right, so one. <coughs> Uh, so together with this vector space, uh, we have uh, a number of uh, n-ray brackets. So n-ray brackets are multilinear maps right, from uh, uh, from this vector space to, to itself. So for, you can think of it as uh, a map from n copies. Of, of V in multilinear or in the argument into V, or uh, it's from this tensor product. And uh, uh, we have to, uh, maybe I should say that this, this uh, uh, map is a graded multilinear. And uh, there are different conventions also uh, for uh, uh, what degree you should have. Right? So the convention that I will adopt is that it has a degree plus one. Okay. So this uh, convention um, agrees with uh, the BDDRST convention. So same. As in the, I, it doesn't always agree with all other conventions, but at least it agrees with, uh, with uh, that one. And what does it mean? It means that uh, right, if you if you take you know an argument count of each one of you know fixed degree, uh, sum their total degrees, add one 
and that should be the degree of the output. Uh, <clears throat> and they have to satisfy I only copy the question. So yeah. the degree convention, if your LM is just the then it's a real by it's shifted by one mm -hmm. degree, right? You have to shift it to next degree. I will give this example later. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so high probabilities, which look like uh, you know, if, if you look at in the multi-linear maps of A1, A2, uh, blah, 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 then some number of arguments here, then one, two, blah, blah, blah. So two, two maps, uh, uh, so two, two of these brackets with different numbers of arguments composed in this way, and then sum, summed in some complicated way over the arguments with permutations and signs equal to zero. Right, so this is kind of rough idea of what these uh, Yukobi identities are uh, in such a way that um, uh, if you restrict it to low uh, degrees, like degree one, degree two, then so in, uh, I should say not degrees, but uh, uh, arities, so the number of arities. So in uh, uh, arity one, two, uh, we're producing uh, DG algebra uh, uh, conventions. So that uh, the map with one argument will act as a differential. The map with uh, two arguments will act as a new bracket. And the first compatibility condition will be that the differential is compatible with the new bracket using the Leibniz rule with the sign. Right. So, so obviously the main problem is with a compact way to uh, express the these uh, higher copy identities. Uh, right. So, question: How to express this uh, compactly? So, and uh, this is important because anything you want to prove about LMP algebra, you just have to start from no text. Right? So, the, the easier a way you have to express them, the easier it will be to prove any consequences. And by the way, this is where it turns like shuffles, unshuffles, and you know, different signs appear and become problematic. Like, uh, all right, maybe so one should, other thing I should mention that. Uh, part of the convention, I said, so the grading of the multilinear brackets is, uh, for me, is always plus one. Uh, and the maurer cartan elements uh, should live in degree. Uh, and again, there are different conventions. So some people uh, shift the uh, the degree so the Mauer Cartan elements live in degree minus one or plus one. They maybe flip the sign so that you know what I denote as plus one it becomes minus one and so. On. But if I say these two things that uh, my bracket is of degree plus one and Mauer Cartan elements live in degree zero, then any other convention you take, you can map to mine after some degree shifts and reversals. And right. So Mauer Cartan elements. Uh, and see, uh, uh, a uh, in this uh, vector space, mm -hmm. it, it satisfies uh, the following. Actually, it's a good lead up to the next thing I want to say. Um, uh, right, so, it satisfies this equation. Um, Right. So uh, uh, the the uh, why, why uh, must model cartan elements live in degree some ambitions? Actually, I so want to. I want a special factor. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Not good. Not yeah. good. So, uh, yeah, so the bracket of degree zero is zero. <laughs> it simplifies things quite a lot. Um, okay. Right, so, so this is this infinite series. So if, if there is only finite number of brackets, it of course terminates. Right? Uh, and if you are in a, a DG the algebra case where everything after degree two is zero, this is just a no model carton in the uh, algebra, right? So it's basically, uh, I will denote the differential by S. So S A plus bracket A with A divided by two equal to zero. Sorry, there, there is a uh, question in the chat. Yeah. But uh, you imposed also the uh, condition to be uh, anti symmetric or to I will get to it in a moment. Yes. Okay. okay. So, uh, yes, right. So, so uh, yes, thank you for correcting me. This, this should be symmetrized in a, in a way I was describing, you know, gradient symmetry. Um, so, uh, why? Uh, in this convention, um, the model Cartan elements must be of degree zero. Well, um, you want basically these terms to interact with each other. You don't want the a the, the a n term of using this equation to land in a different degree than the uh, a n plus one or a, 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 a m or any other power. Uh, so for that reason, they all have to be of degree zero. And when you apply the bracket, the thing that it maps to will be of degree one, and that has to be zero. Okay. So the trick or the the, the tool that we use to uh, simplify uh, the calculations will be generating functions. Okay, generating function. All right, so first a little bit, uh, a bit more conventions. <laughs> uh, so V V for me is actually uh, vibrated. Uh, so it should be Z, Z2 graded uh, in uh, a compatible way. And what does this mean? It means that every uh, pure degree element with respect to the Z grading, which is uh, is the one that I wrote there, also has a Z2 grading. Okay. Uh, um, uh, um, but that uh, Z2 grading, um, sorry, it's, I should say it this way, right? Every, uh, um, the pure uh, degree subspace uh, splits into uh, Z2 even and Z2 odd subspace, right? So uh, I don't know, maybe, actually, maybe there's no way for these gradients to be incompatible, but at least it has to satisfy this condition. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm ready. Super. Yeah, I can. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, Okay, uh, so so this degree uh, I will call ghost degree if I need to refer to this, and this is the uh, uh, parity or odd or even or even odd. Um, okay, um, so the the brackets uh, that I mentioned, right? From they're going to be graded symmetric. In uh, <clears throat> uh, with respect to this by, by grade, okay, a multilinear and grade symmetry. Okay. Uh, also, I want to uh, uh, I want to be free. Right. So I'm free to introduce. Constant formal parameters. Uh, like epsilon one, epsilon uh, two, 
of the uh, which could be of any degree, even or odd. Also, even or odd, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, these uh, const constants, that's why I consider them constants, because they will be uh, passing, um, they will be treated as scalars by the multilinear maps. Right? So you can uh, multiply from the outside and put it inside, or multiply something on the inside and factor it out to the outside. But the convention that I want to uh, these multilinear maps to follow is that um, if I take an odd parameter and uh, I pass it through the front bracket, then I gain a potential minus sign that has to do with the degree of the um, of this uh, of this parameter. So uh, so I get minus to the degree of epsilon times epsilon front bracket. Okay. And uh, it, but that doesn't apply in, in between different arguments or for the uh, for the last bracket. Right? Okay. So then I get no extra minus signs. So if I have uh, uh, epsilon here, then I don't get an extra minus sign when I pass the epsilon through the, the pump. And also, yeah, respect to the last bracket, if I have an epsilon here, then I don't get a, a minus sign. So uh, this means that the bracket that I'm using, uh, they're all of uh, degree plus one, and they're also odd. And this oddness is carried only by the front bracket. So, small remark in the when you work with the anti bracket in the DFDRC, the oddness is carried by the comma in between the two arguments, not by the front bracket. So, that can create some confusion, but uh, you just need to adopt one notation and you can translate any other uh, uh, convention, any other convention into that one. Right. So this is the convention in the uh, literature on LNT and the object. Uh, all right, so, so with these caveats, uh, there's a very simple lemma uh, that uh, underlies the whole business uh, about this. This is that uh, if I, I have any multilinear map, uh, and let me just use the bracket notation uh, again, uh, from a uh, uh, which is uh, uh, graded symmetric in its arguments, you know, using these these rules. Um, so by the by the way, uh, what does uh, graded symmetric mean? It means that uh, if uh, I take uh, any two arguments and uh, uh, I interchange them, so then when they're next to each other, and I interchange them uh, uh, through the comma, uh, I get a, a minus sign depending on their degree, right? So if they're both even, I get no sign. If they're you know even odd, I get no sign. If they're both odd, then I get a sign. Okay, so this is what the graded symmetry. So if I have a graded Uh, symmetric multilinear map, then it is uh, fully determined by its values on what do I call it? The simple elements. Yeah. So these are uh, just products of one uh, uh, single element. So there's like n of them. So where I take, uh, where I only need to consider 
uh, even elements in V. But what do I mean by even? So I mean even up to um, this freedom that I declared that, that, that I want of introducing uh, formal parameters. So basically, I'm uh, extending uh, my uh, graded vector space. Uh, uh, so from whatever uh, field I'm working, real complex numbers, uh, to uh, whatever ring I get by adding to that field uh, these extra parameters. Yes, oh, of course, it must be. Yeah, so uh, they could have, uh, so the, these guys could have any ghost degree, any uh, even odd degree. Right, so we just fix that, and um, uh, so then, in particular, if if uh, your uh, vector space is pure even, then this this is just uh, the the well known uh, equivalence between uh, um, n the reforms and n argument multilinear maps, okay? and uh, you go between them by polarization. Uh, if you uh, only have odd um, uh, elements in your vector space, then well, what, what what do you do? Because I just said you 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 only need to know its values on the even elements. Well, you can formally introduce parameters that are odd, and any odd element can be made even by multiplying it uh, with a an, uh, with a, a odd, uh, odd parameter. And so, so for odd a one, a two, so a three, and so on, uh, uh, so let let a equal uh, you know linear combination of these guys uh, two plus epsilon three a three and however many you need. Uh, where uh, the total uh, each term and the total sum is themselves even because you've chosen the epsilons to be of uh, uh, corresponding character. Okay. Even. And uh, if you have mixed uh, vector spaces of odd and even uh, non trivial elements of both degrees, then for even ones, uh, you don't need to do anything. For odd ones, you, you again introduce uh, formal hot parameters. Right. So, um, a conclusion of this is that um, uh, whenever I need to specify a multilinear map, which is graded symmetric in this way, I only need to specify its values in this, in this form. Uh, and uh, so the next trick I want to introduce are these uh, generating functions. Uh, so uh, given a collection of these uh, multilinear maps. Um, I can collect them together into a single map. Uh, so, which I will just write as a bracket without the subscript. Um, from the direct sum of this, uh, this uh, synergized n powers. Into me, uh, where basically um, uh, all right, so I'm summing over n, uh, and you know uh, this happens to have uh, this sum happens to have a special notation for it. Uh, it is the uh, symmetric free symmetric algebra on the vector space P. So symmetric. Tensor algebra uh, 
uh, on V. Uh, you might have seen it, uh, its incarnations as uh, um, Fox spaces and bosonic or fermionic or mixed Fox spaces. So it's just uh, the same construction. Um, and it's, uh, it's very simple, right? So if I have this bracket um, uh, acting on uh, elements of you know, different degrees, or sorry, di uh, different um, arities, I should say, right? So uh, if I take something which from here, which has components in, uh, uh, in just V or in a, a, a symmetric product of uh, two elements of V, and so on, right? I just apply the particular energy bracket to that element separately. Right? So then I get it. So on, so um, And uh, combining this uh, with uh, the idea of, of polarization, uh, it turns out to be useful to evaluate such a map uh, on. Uh, on um, uh, powers of a single element, okay? And I want to uh, collect the powers of a single element in a convenient way. So then I introduce a notation for this. So this is the generating function part. When I write uh, e to the power a, where a is uh, uh, an even element of my underlying vector space, then I really just mean this uh, uh, big formal sum of uh, a to tensor power uh, n divided by n factorial, right? So the n factorial is just going to reproduce to, to agree with the, the usual notion of exponential map. Uh, okay. All right. So then you get a small. A quite trivial lemma. So this uh, big bracket of S V to V is fully determined by its values on these exponential elements. Uh, in the symmetric tensor algebra uh, for uh, A and B. Right. So basically, any, um, if I want to test any identity uh, for this uh, big multilinear bracket, all I need to do is test it on elements of this type. That's the basic idea. Uh, so with with this uh, notation, uh, let's see. Am I missing anything? I think I mentioned it like that. I can uh, precisely state the uh, axioms of uh, an infinity algebra in a very compact. Way. Right. So, um, I guess this should be a proposition or something. The higher your Kobe identities uh, for an L infinity algebra, and let me write an L infinity algebra as V as this under, uh, underlying bigrid. Uh, vector space together with this uh, big bracket, which collects uh, brackets of all uh, arities. Is and uh, it has this very simple form. <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe it looks surprising, but this is. Um, and I should say that uh, I didn't kind of take this out of the blue. I, I stole this 
uh, from uh, from from other people who were <laughs> uh, somehow arrived at the bits of this picture before before I did. Um, but uh, uh, actually, I'm not sure if anybody that I know or rolled down exactly this formula. But I know that people have used these big brackets for sure, and also this expansion notation. And maybe some of the experts will tell me if this is <laughs> uh, new or not. Uh, okay, but I want to um, uh, give an idea of uh, where uh, this formula might might come from. So this is this formula is equivalent to uh, a well-known way of expressing the identities of uh, L -team algebra. There's the squaring of a uh, to zero over differential. Right. So what is this differential? So this differential um, uh, uh, comes from a uh, this dual way of presenting analytic algebras using three BG, uh, BG algebras. Right? So in fact, I've already showed you um, basically uh, the DG co-algebra version of it, right? Because this Three tensor algebra also happens to be a co algebra in a way that I, I will not state. <laughs> uh, and it has a differential on it, which is corresponds to this big bracket. And the square of that differential is uh, uh, identical to, to this identity. Uh, more naturally, to go from a, um, rather than working with co algebra, it's uh, convenient to work with uh, an algebra. For me, at least, and the other people have already gotten used to the whole world. Uh, but what is the, the algebra that, that we're talking about? Okay. So um, we're talking about, I guess, the Chevalier, what, we, what might be called the Chevalier uh, Eilenberg uh, presentation. And L infinity algebra, uh, which uh, uh, whose uh, components, uh, whose ingredients are um, uh, this, this uh, symmetric tensor algebra on the dual vector space of the one that we used here in, in, uh, um, in the bracket presentation. And it's a grand dimension. Sorry, it's a graded rule, right? Yes, yeah. So, with degree wise. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Right. So, what do you mean that it also like, uh, so the, the dual of uh, the nth, like ghost n degree part, should have ghost degree minus n? No, n by n. Yeah, okay. So, just grade by, yeah, degree by degree. Yeah, so, this is the uh, uh, three. Uh, uh, commutative of, uh, uh, graded algebra on V, the dual, the dual of our underlying vector space V. Uh, and uh, on this very large algebra, uh, uh, if you have a, a differential, then uh, <clears throat> um, uh, the relationship with uh, the brackets uh, on the other side is, is the following. So where, um, you know, if you take D, so if D is, is, a, is a differential on this algebra, so at the very least, it's an algebra, so it's it's a, a linear map on uh, this whole space, and I, I can restrict it to um, uh, subspaces. So if I restrict it to the subspace that responds to just V star itself, uh, then it's going to have values in V star again. Okay, so uh, no, sorry, 
it will have values in the entire algebra, right? So if I, if I take all of this and take this as a linear map, uh, so from B star to S B star, uh, if I if I dualize this, then what do I get? I get some uh, map, so I have to reverse the, uh, uh, the you know the, uh, these uh, domain codomain on the dualization. So the dual of the symmetric tensor algebra on B star is symmetric tensor algebra on B. Uh, the dual of B star is V, right? And uh, I have here whatever the dual of B is. Well, the dual of D is precisely the big rack, our big rack. So the relation between this differential and the big bracket is duality. Um, and the square of uh, the differential equals to zero, when you decode it, right, and uh, do undualize, it is precisely this point. And um, so um, uh, I should note that uh, in, in the proof, I won't give the proof, I mean, it's an exercise you can do. So in the proof, I will just say that it is convenient to, uh, uh, so you, uh, there's a natural duality between V and V star, right? You don't need to do anything there, but uh, it might be convenient to introduce some extra factors and the duality between, um, the these uh, uh, these tensor algebras, and uh, uh, I found that it's convenient to use the convention for normalization such that um, the pairing of these exponential elements, where A belongs to uh, to B and Z belongs to V star, uh, it should be just the exponential of the natural pairing between Z and A. So for and if you expand the power series. Uh, you find that there's some extra inflectorial in the normalization between um, the uh, pairing in higher areas. So it just happens to be convenient and makes it easier to translate identities from uh, the Shavari and the side to the bracket side. All right, so how, how am I doing for time? What is. Uh, uh, approximately. So. I should talk for another 15 minutes. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this is a long way. Uh, now, in principle, I could write, uh, you know, uh, this identity expanded in heritage, and you know, you might recognize some of these identities, but well, I won't do it here. Uh, I can send the slides to the organizers. I can make it available if, if they want. Um, uh, I should also maybe very quickly mention what. Uh, I'm thinking more physics are. So, given this notation, I just want to be able to write it down. So, while I'm erasing, it's the perfect time to ask any questions. If, uh, yeah, you can do it. The same thing that I suppose for A infinity, if you like. I know, I don't know. So if there is a good kind of analog, of it this, without factor, you know. maybe, yeah. So you could write it as like one over one minus A instead. So yeah, it is because uh, yeah. you yeah. don't impose this symmetrization, right? Okay. So I haven't tried it, but I'm sure it's possible. <laughs> uh, all right, so L infinity morphism. Uh, 
So this is a, uh, a linear map, lambda, from uh, this uh, symmetric tensor algebra on SV. So maybe I should say, you know, I'm thinking of a morphism between uh, two L infinity algebras, so V and W would correspond to brackets. Okay, and so this notation should you think of it as an arrow in the category of L infinity algebras, but underlying it is uh, this uh, symmetric multilinear map or collection of symmetric multilinear maps right, from SV to W, such that, and now they have. Uh, they should satisfy some you know, relations, uh, and uh, you can uh, efficiently summarize them in the following way. So I'm taking a bracket with respect to W, I'm mapping into it something from uh, V, like this. And this has to equal lambda acting on the bracket of uh, sorry, into the A bracket into the A B okay so this is something that lives in V I apply lambda to it now there's a W and it looks like the W bracket applied to something that lives in W. And how do I get it? I get it by exponentiating some element, uh, the, the lambda image of some element in V or SV. And uh, this might look complicated, but actually, if you compare it to the Chevalier Annenberg uh, presentation, uh, this is equivalent to um, uh, having a uh, uh, an algebra of homomorphism that commutes with the differential, uh, where lambda is uh, the dualization of uh, so big lambda is the dualization of the small lambda. Um, uh, so if this is a uh, homomorphism, uh, and the homomorphism need only be defined in the generators, so it's enough to define it. On Star. Right. And again, dualizing this, we get equal. Uh, so the dual of lambda is equal to lambda. And I should have a W unit somewhere. I guess it's here. All right, now very quickly to uh, homotopy transfers. Um, Real? Question? Is that a question? No, it's okay. All right, so there's a uh, in my understanding is a kind of full theorem uh, that says that uh, if uh, you know, V with bracket and uh, is an healthy algebra and V prime with bracket are healthy algebras uh, such that and uh, so here uh, if you uh, out of these brackets, you just take the um, the unary bracket, so the one that takes just one argument, it behaves like a differential, and so this gives a, a chain complex or co-chain complex. Right? Uh, if uh, the underlying chain complexes uh, are uh, are uh, uh, homotopy equivalent, then maybe I should say that uh, 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 only one of the brackets, big brackets, should be fully specified, right? The other one 
uh, could be equal to with you know the unary bracket uh, fixed, but higher terms are yet to be determined. Uh, then uh, 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 D prime has an L infinity algebra structure. Uh, uh, transferred from B and homotopy equivalent uh, in an alternative sense. So I won't say what the homotopy equivalent and L infinity sense means, but there's some notion of homotopy equivalence of L infinity algebras, which are morphisms going one way or the other, uh, invertible up to homotopies. There's a notion of homotopy in the L infinity world. Uh, so if you have some uh, uh, some L infinity algebra structure on V, and then you forget about the high brackets, you just have uh, chain complexes. You know, another chain complex that's homotopy equivalent, you can transfer the structure from here to there. It's still an infinity L infinity algebra, and it uh, happens to be homotopy equivalent in L infinity. Um, so, the closest formal statement that I know of <laughs> is uh, in uh, uh, this book by Rodé Ballet. Uh, uh, and it's theorem uh, 10.3. And it's like different versions of this theorem, uh, depending on the context. But I think uh, what it, the statement that they make is in the case when. Um, it's not an arbitrary homotopy equivalence, but one underlying complex is a homotopy contraction of the other one. So it doesn't have to be uh, minimal, right? And at this point, I can say what minimal a model of an L infinity algebra is. It is a homotopy equivalent L infinity algebra where the differential, so the, the unary part of the bracket, is just zero. Right, so this is concordant with the notion of minimal models in PG algebras and other PG algebras. Um, so I actually don't know if there's a formal statement of this folk uh, result somewhere. Uh, but the, another comment about this is that um, is this this formal result. Somehow it's this. And uh, if you look at the proof, the proof goes to some bar co bar constructions. Maybe if I understood what those constructions really were, I could answer, answer the question whether that proof is really explicit or not. But I don't, so I don't really consider it explicit, unfortunately. <laughs> All right, so I probably have very little time left. But I want to sketch very quickly uh, uh, how one can arrive at recursive formulas to do this homotopy transfer in two specific cases. When you go to, uh, from a generic model to a minimal model, the one that has this zero unary part of the bracket, and also vice versa. If you start with some minimal model of an L infinity bracket, uh, and you want to lift it to some non-minimal, uh, but somehow more maybe more convenient model, uh, you can you can still do that. All right. So uh, okay. Right, so transfer to minimal model. All right. So what do I need? So I need to start with some. Um, Mm, some uh, uh, some uh, underlying vector space, which would be the minimal model with zero differential, right? And 
I want I have some other L infinity uh, algebra, which uh, you know, so so the one with the primes, so that V and V prime are uh, quasi isomorphic as uh, uh, chain complexes. Right? So V is basically isomorphic to the cohomology of V prime, and I start with. Uh, lambda one, so this is the unary component of uh, the homomorphism that I'm going to build, uh, which goes from V to V prime, basically embedding the homology. Right, so uh, in the homology uh, classes in V prime are uh, correspond to elements of V, and I just this this map just makes some choice, right? So you choose some particular representative for every cohomology class, right? And so what happens is that uh, now what you need to do is you need to uh, build the uh, higher arity components of lambda and of the bracket uh, on on V on the minimal on the minimal model, and the way you do it is you basically you recursively solve. Uh, for the um, uh, homomorphism condition, right? So what you want to do is recursively solve uh, the um, uh, homomorphism condition, which uh, looks like this. Right? So I showed it to you before. Right. So this involves the putative higher brackets on the minimal model. Uh, and also it, it involves the uh, higher uh, arity components on this uh, morphism. So I want this uh, right, to be equal to this version of the morphism. Uh, property okay I think the primes are in the right place um, so uh, if you expand it if if uh, if you expand it in different uh, areas right and suppose that you make an inductive assumption that uh, this uh, identity is satisfied up to some number of arguments right? Then what you can do is you can uh, write down the terms that involve uh, the next unknown things that you want to compute, and this will basically be uh, so lambda one of the nth bracket uh, minus the non-minimal differential acting on lambda n. A to the n plus the upper terms. And uh, basically, you want this to be zero again up to error terms. So, the error terms basically they vanish with a certain number of arguments, and you look at this uh, expression. Um, these error terms de depend only on brackets with lower number of arguments. And uh, here you have a uh, uh, vanishing that you want to achieve up to the next number of arguments. And it uh, turns out that you can uh, <clears throat> uh, solve separately for the energy bracket and for the energy component of the homomorphism from this condition. And to do this, you need to show that the errors have some special properties, that they are somehow uh, closed with respect to the differentials. And uh, to do that, you can use you know some properties of the journey functions. I won't go into the details because I don't have the time. And so this last thing I want to say is uh, how to do it for the uh, um, case of going from minimal to non-minimal. And square two, uh, so from uh, 
Right. So again, I'm uh, starting with um, in a minimal model and non-minimal model. So in this case, um, B prime is the minimal one, and I have a, a morphism. A chain map from uh, a chain complex where I want to build a non minimal model of the same uh, layout. Uh, um, so, here actually, it turns out to be convenient to set all the higher arity components of the morphism to zero. So, it's just equal to lambda one plus zero plus zero, and so on. Right? It just happens. Probably you could do it in a more complicated way. You can add other things, but at least this way you can uh, you can uh, do the construction. You can do the transfer. Uh, right. So we know what the lambda is. Uh, we need to now build the higher brackets, and the higher brackets are built by uh, satisfying the Jacobi identity. So we need to satisfy. The higher you call it. And, then, right? and when you call that, they look like, like this uh, equal to zero. Uh, again, make a uh, an assumption. Uh, you, you need to make a, um, an inductive assumption that. Uh, in some uh, in some special cases, this identity is satisfied. So in general, this will not be satisfied. So you go to the next case where it's not satisfied, and uh, you um, you write down Right, so you basically find that uh, the next bracket that you don't know, right, it's uh, S of something plus error terms. Again, uh, this whole thing is uh, vanishing up to some error terms. And uh, what you do is, again, you need to uh, exploit the uh, known uh, properties of the brackets that you made uh, um, that they satisfy the Jacobi identity up to a certain point to prove that these error terms uh, are of the right type so that you can solve for the nth bracket. So you need to prove that uh, all the error terms combined are closed and also exact, right? Otherwise, you won't be able to solve this, this equation. Uh, and again, you demonstrate this by using the uh, gener generating function form of the Jacobi and homomorphism. Um, uh, but I just need to make a particular uh, uh, statement about how the induction works. Right. So um, uh, the the uh, uh, so the induction actually has to uh, has two directions. So one is in the arity. So. Uh, one, two, three, four. So that's the number of arguments we feed into uh, the brackets. But uh, the other uh, direction is actually the gradient. So ghost degree. Uh, ghost number. Um, so again, this is P, P plus one, P plus two, P minus one, P minus two, and so on and so forth. Um, so it turns out that uh, at least the, the way I know how to do this, uh, generalizing this old paper by uh, uh, Barney Schofflad Stashev, is to, to make uh, the assumption that um, the, the vector space where we're working has uh, vanishing components in sufficiently high ghost degrees. So I'm saying that for some you know, sufficiently high degree, this is all going to be zero. 
right? So, and if that's the case, then you can start the induction here. Uh, then do it this way until you get to infinity there. And after that, you can jump to the next end. So you do the induction this way, and then you jump again. And okay. so the induction has to be done in this uh, double sense. You do it by degree, starting from some top degree, going all the way down to minus infinity. Maybe you have, you know, your infinity algebra is bounded in degrees, so you only have finite steps then. But you could have infinite steps in general, and then you go by uh, by parity one at a time. So I think I'm out of time, and so this is going to be where else. Thank you very much for a very exciting talk. <laughs>
right? So for so A is some, you know, some even maybe some just some number, and this is a function of, of A. So this is a uh, degree n polynomial, homogeneous degree n polynomial. And um, basically what you want to do from that polynomial is to recover the coefficient, the Taylor coefficient of the nth term, the nth term in Taylor expansion. And you do that just by taking derivatives. Yes, okay. And uh, this process is known as polarization. So if you look that up, uh, I think that many sources will explain. So polarization is most famous in the case when going from quadratic forms to bilinear forms. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the in the case is exactly the same, but you have to introduce these, you know, formal formally odd parameters to take derivatives in the correct way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So your A is something with zero to string field, right? Sorry, A. Hey, hey, um, <laughs> I don't know. You know maybe. <laughs> sure. Why not? Because this is canonical element in the tensor. Right. So I, I believe that this yeah, is notation. I stole it from somebody who says that right. they stole it from C Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so C Buck just takes a channels to be the divots. Okay. Yeah. And and from the sum, yeah. Okay, sure. So yeah, and this is that part is not new for sure. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm not claiming novelty there. If I'm not confused, uh, I saw this generate generating function yeah. uh, approach uh, for the first time. So uh, today, uh, you mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it's, maybe it's in some Siva. other <laughs> in, in some other incarnation yeah. somewhere else. But, but uh, at this point, I, I'm concerning about the convergence issues, or how how do you deal with? Uh, well, these are formal series, so I don't need to worry about convergence. Okay, so 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 in, uh, maybe to be more precise, or maybe I already raised it, but when I wrote this big, you know, sum, okay, you should convert it to an infinite product. Okay. Um, so you didn't enclose it uh, in any topological sense. No, you um, don't. Know. I mean, we um, don't need any topology here. So of course you. You can introduce one if you want the okay. topologies on uh, so sequences of finite length with unbounded length. I think it's uh, locally convex, non fresh air. You know, <laughs> okay. uh, so, yeah, so, so you could so, do so it, but like in a thirst link, you don't need it. <laughs> okay. So, maybe. So, one of the comments that I, I want to make is, of course, uh, I'm very happy to hear if uh, you know anybody in the audience uh, recognize pieces of this of this puzzle and uh, you know kind of knows that they're uh, somewhere in literature. So I believe, and I'll be happy to hear about. It. Yeah. So I believe that the transfer to minimum model coincides, like once you work out the formulas, to what uh, Branio and and you know uh, other people do. And I think I found lots of references to do this. Not in this notation, right? Uh, but for the transfer from from minimal, somehow um, I couldn't find any explicit reference to this, except for this folk result that you could do it somehow in general, right. maybe. Um, now, maybe it would be interesting to compare to that and to that. Right, but it's right. actually it's essentially you know you yeah. you start with the. Uh, because that isomorphism on the underlying vector yeah. spaces. Yeah. And uh, then then you have, have all this uh, con contracting homotopy. Mm -hmm. And the point is that you just, uh, and this you extend to the, uh, to the endomorphism over that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so it's already <laughs> getting a bit complicated. <laughs> and, and, and essentially, that's it. And this you compose with the from your. Uh, Okay. Yeah. So somehow this feels not so explicit. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, oh, exactly. but, but I should say that uh, I, in this notation, I've also not completely worked out how to work with homotopies. And the, the, the actual statement that this is homo, homotopically equivalent to the original algebra, I don't know how to make it 
-hmm. explicit in this language. So yeah. still don't know. Okay. okay, nice. Are there any other questions? If not, we thank should thank the speaker okay. again. Thank you. At the same time, we have to apologize uh, our uh, online uh, participants because of uh, low quality of uh, stream. But uh, you, you can uh, expect uh, we will post uh, uh, the recording uh, hopefully in a better quality on our YouTube account. And uh, with, if, if uh, Igor allows us, uh, we post also uh, uh, his his uh, Beamer notes. So. Can take it as, as granted. Who is going to talk uh, next week? Yes, yeah, so, so, so you, you you can look forward for, for uh, the talk uh, who will be delivered by uh, Carlo uh, Cremonini, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and uh, I'm not sure about his topic uh, at this moment, but uh, you, you will you'll be informed uh, on a proper time. And yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs>